Okay. Welcome back. Chem 110A sample final exam problem number eight. The one that most people are the most confused by. And the reason why I think is because they don't really know how to think this through. And they don't, perhaps don't realize that it's two problems put together. A cube of zinc that is 1.55 centimeters on each edge is treated with HCl. When I say treated with, that means reacted with HCl. The reaction that occurs is the zinc reacts with the HCl. It forms zinc chloride and H2. That is a gas. How do we know that? Well, the problem says that if 6.95 liters of H2 gas at standard temperature and pressure, da, 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 you better remember what that means, gets produced, what mass of zinc remains? Okay, pretty complicated stuff. Let's draw a picture. Sometimes drawing a picture can help you understand things a little better. We start with this pristine cube of zinc. That is 1.55 centimeters on each of its edges. Its length, its width, and its height. It gets tossed into a vat of HCl and it starts to react. What's the results? Well, the results are some of the HCl reacts, some of the zinc reacts, and bubbles of H2 gas form that are then collected in a big balloon. H2 gas. Okay? So that's what's happening. We're taking the zinc we're throwing it into the acid, a reaction occurs. Some of the zinc reacts and it forms H2 gas. Okay, so how do we think about this? Well, remember, they're asking us the zinc that remains. Your job is to understand that the amount of product that gets formed will inform you not of the amount of zinc you started with, not the amount of zinc that you have left, but the amount of zinc that you reacted. Think about it. If you ended up making 10 sandwiches, how many slices of bread did you start with? You can't answer that question. How many slices of bread do you have left? You can't answer that question. If you know you made 10 sandwiches, 10 sandwiches were produced, the only thing you can know for sure is that you used up 20 slices of bread. That's how much you used up. Okay, so this amount of H2 gas produced will tell you the amount of zinc that got used. So let's do that calculation first. 6.95 liters of H2 gas. At STP, you remember what that means, right? STP, 22.41400 liters is equal to one mole of a gas at STP every time. Excellent, so we'll use it. Where does the one mole go and where does the 22.414 liters go? Well, we want the liters on the bottom and moles on top. Why do we want to do this in the first place? Well, as always, you want to try to get to moles as fast as you can. The reason why you want to get to moles is the moles of H2 is related to the moles of zinc based on this reaction, this 1 to 1 to 1 to 2 ratio here. So, if we cancel out units from before and we get to moles of H2 gas, we can easily recognize a 1 to 1 ratio here. Make sure things cancel the way we want them to. Once again, we got a mole to mole ratio. Every time we have a reaction, we're going to be looking for this if we're doing calculations. Okay, moles of zinc. We want the mass of zinc. 
So you have to find of the periodic table molar mass. And if you look it up, 65.3 grams of zinc per every one mole of zinc. I'll show you. Zinc is right here, 65.39 moles or grams of zinc per every one mole. Good. So let me stick that in there. 39. Okay, the moles of zinc cancel. Something from before always has to cancel. So you can't just calculate through and get a number. You have to make sure of your significant figures. And that's going to be three sig figs. And you can't just say 20.3. And you can't even say 20.3 grams. And you can't even say 20.3 grams of zinc. You have to know more. And remember what we said? 10 sandwiches made, 20 slices of bread used. This is the amount of grams of zinc that were used up. Or reacted. Right? Because the amount of product that was produced comes from the amount of reactant that reacted or got used up. Okay? Alright. That's zinc. Excellent. Okay. So we're not done yet because they don't want to know how much zinc was used up. They want to know how much is left. Well, think about it. If you spent 20 dollars and 30 cents and somebody wants to know how much money you have left in your wallet what do you have to know you have to know the amount of money you started with and that comes from the cube of zinc that is 1.55 centimeters on each edge at the beginning okay because what you're going to do is you're going to calculate from the volume length times width times height one point five five centimeters and we're going to cube that value and once we get that that's going to be the cubic centimeters volume of zinc, you know zinc is a solid cubic centimeters. We need the density. Seven point one three three grams of zinc per every one cubic centimeter. This is the density of your conversion sheet. Cubic centimeters cancel. Make sure that you cube the 1.55 as well as the centimeters cubed and you get a value here to three sig figs right, of 26.6 grams and that's the zinc that you started with or initially okay so if this is how much you started with and this is how much you used up the difference between the two tells you how much is left. So 26.6 grams of zinc start minus 20.3 grams of zinc used will give you the amount of gram, uh, grams of zinc left over or remaining. That math, 6 Point three, drawing the line here. That's your answer. That's why it has two sig figs, because we did an addition subtraction at the end. This is a complicated problem. It will definitely be the longest problem you have. It should definitely be the last one you do. And in order to practice it, you want to be doing 5D, 5E, 7H. And just think about what all that information gives you. Good luck.